Happy holidays to all of you incredible, incredible men and women out there who are serving, healing, supporting, holding space for so many people in your world. This happy holidays. And I wanted to bring you this very special episode today for all of you who have been on a personal development journey, who have recognized the importance, the critical component of our greater success and our ability to make an impact and a contribution in a bigger way. And recognizing how important our own personal happiness is in that journey. So this episode is for you. If you have been working so diligently on yourself this year, I honor you. And today I want to speak to that part that feels like there's still so much further to go. (laughs) Hello and welcome to the Business of Happiness podcast. Happy holidays, my friends. Merry Christmas if you celebrate. Happy Hanukkah. If you don't celebrate either of those two major religions, my heart is with you in celebration and appreciation this holiday season. And today I really want to touch base with you. Have you been feeling like there's still so much to heal? And is focusing on so much of the problem, on all the parts that still feel broken and wounded, is focusing too much on those hurt parts that still need transformation, causing you to miss out on the greater gifts. I had a really interesting experience this year. And, you know, as we end, close out 2023, I know we love to reflect on the year. In fact, if you are at all aware of personal growth and development, you know that reflection on the past year is so critical. Learning from our lessons, from our mistakes, from our successes, such a big component of growth such a big component of our personal evolution. And so looking over this year, I've just been holding so much gratitude for the big shifts that I've personally made in my life. And it's so fun to do that. And such a, it's actually really important to do that because on a side note here, it allows us to celebrate and create safety for growth and progress. And I'll tell you, every year that I've done this, it's accelerated my growth in the following year, for sure. I mean, I I sometimes feel like I'm on a rocket ship of change and growth and transformation because I really have nailed the algorithm to growth. And one of the biggest components is celebration, for sure. And as I was looking over this year of my own personal development, something that I was working to heal and to support to a greater extent, was a part of my, of my life that I felt was weak. I'd been putting so much focus and attention on my business, so much focus and attention on my personal growth, on my health, and that was a big part of my intention for 2023 was to really pay attention to my nutrition and my body and taking care of this vessel that needs to carry me around so that I can do the big important work I need to do this year. And the part that took a back seat was my loving, closest relationship with my husband. And so about halfway through the year, I became keenly aware of having been living a life alongside my husband and not including him in it. How many of us can relate to that? How many of us can relate to... You know, I I liken this to uh, an analogy he and I recognized, what was it, almost eight years ago now in our 15-year anniversary, we were saying how it felt like we were running on two treadmills right next to each other. And we were both running along, but not on the same path, just next to each other, kind of looking over at one another and maybe high-fiving one another every now and then, but really not in connection or conjunction with one another, just really running on these two treadmills. I mean, how many of you have felt that way before with your husband? I think especially when our kids are little, we can feel that way, right? 
Life just passes by. And all of a sudden you look back and 10 years have passed and you've both been there the whole time, but really not connected. And this summer I realized I'd been developing my business and my friendships and my beautiful personal growth outside of Killian. We weren't on the same personal development path. This has been something that's been so integral to my life for the past 15 years. And the deeper and deeper I got into the work, the more Killian did something different. And so this summer, I really started becoming aware of all the parts that I had developed and healed all those wounds that I had healed from my old narratives, my old stories and limiting beliefs, and how blatant it was of all the limiting beliefs Killian hadn't addressed. All the work I was doing, he was not. And that glaring contrast felt super uncomfortable for me. And remember where our attention goes, our energy flows. So once I realized this, I couldn't unsee it. You know, when you, when you see a spot on your shirt in the morning, you're getting ready for work and there's this like a dull stain that didn't happen that morning, maybe happened in the wash and you're not sure if it was, you know, a little oil from the fabric softener. You never know, right? But there's this like, if you look hard enough in the mirror, you just see the discoloration. And then once you see it, you can't unsee it. We all know that experience. I mean, we've had that in our businesses, right? When there's a something that you recognize as a quote unquote problem, and then man, it's like your, your attention and your eyes and your awareness just laser beams straight to that problem. We almost become obsessed with the problem. I know I did because this was my marriage. This became a big deal. And once I noticed the problem, I became so aware in every conversation, in every interaction, wow, this is a big deal. And once again, as we do, our reticular activating system blocks out all the other information. When you tell your mind, this is what I want to focus on, your mind is so skilled at doing this, it starts zeroing in and allowing for all the other pieces of information to support that. So what did I see? I started hearing podcasts about when your spouse is not doing the work. I started noticing workshops for men that Killian wasn't signing up for. I started recognizing in my group coaching and my radical happiness program, my cohort that I was working with over the summer, all of our beautiful women in that program, they were talking about it. And the in incompatibility between them and their spouses when it came to personal development and healing their wounds. Ah, the universe started screaming it at me. And I really was focusing on the problem. It reminded me in our own personal development journey how we can focus on the problem. We become obsessed. I need to heal this. I need to heal this. It's still not healed. Here's more evidence of when it's not healed. And a big thing in personal development, a big hot topic right now is creating generational change. Right? We recognize when we go on this journey, oh, this wound, this limiting belief that I have about myself, that I'm not smart enough, I'm going to just pick one. I'm not smart enough or I have to work extra hard because I'm not, things don't come easily to me. We start recognizing these limiting beliefs as narratives that have been passed down generationally. So often that story isn't even ours. It's something that was passed on from our parents or our grandparents. Sometimes it's a legacy of our family that goes back generations. These are who our people are. We struggle with X. Maybe it's money, right? Our, our families had a money story for generations. Our families had a story of being taken advantage of for generations. And when we recognize that generational wound, we start to realize that it doesn't necessarily belong to us. In fact, it never does. 
And it's one of the greatest rewards of personal development is when you can detach from a story that never was yours to begin with. When we can break that generational curse. I call it a curse, but I'm using that word tongue in cheek because there's no, there's no magic here. It's just a story that's passed down and a belief that's integrated into our deeper understanding of who we are because that's the story that was told in our childhood. It's a story that was modeled for us by the people we respected, the people we looked up to. It became a part of the fabric of our family. And when we can realize, oh, I can heal that wound, ah, it gets so exciting. But every now and then, even in the healing journey, something activates that old wound, even if you've healed it. How many of you know exactly what I'm talking about? When you say, oh my gosh, I thought I healed this. I did all the work. I went to therapy. I worked through radical happiness with Taryn and we found and identified this wound and I healed it. And I did the subconscious work and oh my gosh, here it shows up again in a new way. And that can be so frustrating. We start looking at that old wound and now we start obsessing about it. And then something else activates. Oh, here's another, here's another, here's another. Is focusing too much on what is broken, causing us to miss out on what is healed, causing us to miss out on the enormous gifts. Because what I became aware of is that all the greatness that my husband was in our relationship, I was turning my back to. Here was this incredible man who had so many gifts those beautiful components of him who I fell in love with. And I was literally blocking it out of my awareness because I was focusing on the flaws. As we do sometimes in our personal development. Have you been beating yourself up as we near the end of 2023, thinking, you know, I told myself I was going to lose 10 pounds. I told myself I was going to heal this money wound. I told myself I was going to finally take on my dreams and start that incredible side business or that passion in my life. Have you been beating yourself up secretly and not giving yourself an opportunity to reflect on all that you have accomplished, all the parts of you you have healed. Like I did with my husband, I was ignoring all the parts of him that were incredibly good, incredibly supportive, incredibly loving, incredibly unique. The moment I made that shift, things started to change. And we see the same in our personal development journey and the same in our businesses, even in medicine and dentistry. We can get so mired in what's broken that we forget to pay attention to what is healed. And when we give ourselves that opportunity to celebrate what is good, it doesn't, it's not bypassing or ignoring the problems. It's bringing us to feeling good again. See, because when you feel bad, when you feel victimized, when you feel helpless or hopeless about your situation, you block yourself from being able to see new perspective or creative problem solving. You lose motivation and energy. You just feel wounded and exhausted. But when we feel good, when we feel empowered, now we tap into that motivation that is the source of being able to take action on our dreams, to be able to take aligned and inspired action on losing the weight, writing the book, hiring a new person in your business, creating clarity in your business model, going out for a date. See, because in my marriage, when I was only focusing on the bad things, I sure as hell did not feel like going out on date night. That didn't feel good. 
I wasn't looking forward to it. I would much rather go by myself and have a night out by myself when I was focusing on all the negative. When I started focusing on the great things, it wasn't that it masked me and blocked me from knowing the parts that I still wanted to heal. I wasn't turning a blind eye. I was just feeling better about myself and about the situation to a place where I could have a calm, loving conversation that, guess what? Turned things around 180 degrees. 180 degrees. When we approach any situation, whether it's a conversation with someone we love or a conversation with our business plan or a conversation with ourselves from a place of fear, anger, lack, scarcity, the words always come out wrong. They always do. They're not received in the same way in that conversation. The words come out energetically in a way that's not in alignment with where we want to go. Does that make sense? Let's break it down. Let's take this very real, very real situation of a marriage. If I approached my husband with, you know what? You've just got to start healing yourself because you have all these wounds and I can see them here and they're showing up here and I see it in your family here and we start critiquing, what is the immediate response? Defense, rejection, maybe dissociation, disconnecting, right? Immediately, that person wants to protect or hide or run away. Fight or flight. We're causing fight or flight. But if we arrive at a situation from an energetic place of wholeness, of love, of abundance, look, from a place of, I already have so much right now. I've got nothing to lose. I'm so grateful I have all this support and this beautiful human in my life. Now I come to this conversation saying, I love you and I want this for you. I would love for you to feel whole and healed in a way that I have felt. I'd love to talk to you about this more. Man, now it's received completely differently. What if we approached all components of our life in this way? Instead of focusing constantly on the things and the parts that we want to heal or we want to fix or we want to change, what if we allowed ourselves to see all the beautiful things that we have healed? See, because even when we look at generational change, even when we look at how important it is to break those painful stories that are limiting beliefs. How many beautiful, empowered beliefs have been passed down to you generation to generation in your family? I'm willing to bet there's some beautiful ones in there. And maybe if your family had a generational pattern of money scarcity, did your family also have maybe a generational pattern of generosity to others? Or maybe what's been passed down from generation to generation is kindness. Or maybe it is wealth. Maybe you're one of the people who had an addiction story in your family, but enormous abundance and wealth and financial support. We get to honor those parts that are the gift. And when we honor the parts that are the gift, it gives us that empowerment to take action and heal the parts that are wounded in every component of our life, even when it comes to money, even when it comes to personal health, physical health. What parts of, the, of you can you be grateful for and celebrate? What parts are the gifts that you already have that other people are wishing for? As you go into this beautiful holiday season, I know there might be many things on your wish list. As you go into New Year's and the trend is always resolutions and intentions for the new year, I'm going to ask you to consider something a little bit different. What about reflection 
on the gifts that you already hold. Right here. Right here. Right now. The gifts that you don't need to reach for. The parts of you that don't need healing. The parts of you that are already whole and healed. How good would it feel to just give yourself some time to sit with that? I know for me, in 2024, one of my greatest intentions is not about fixing, but about appreciating. Because I know when I appreciate more, big things come to me. I'm sending you so much love this holiday season. Sending your family so much love this holiday season. And looking forward to celebrating with you in 2024. Because remember, when you feel good, that's when you can do good. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Business of Happiness podcast. If this episode brought you new perspective and value, I invite you to subscribe so that you catch all upcoming episodes and leave us a review. And if you know of a friend or colleague who could benefit from this perspective, share this episode with them and empower their day. For more information about the Business of Happiness and the Radical Happiness for Practitioners course, find me on www.thebizofhappiness.com. See you there.